Welcome to worship at St. John's as we look and listen for the ways God calls us to welcome. Welcome as we worship together online and here in the sanctuary. We will have fellowship hour today and again on January 28th, and Sue Lalo will again be available to give people tours of our new website. Our food pantry team will be volunteering tomorrow, January 22nd, doing, doing setup in the morning, 9 to 12 p.m., and serving clients in the evening from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Please see Lana Snyder, our food pantry coordinator, if you would like to help. Our next Friday fun night will be on February 9th. We will be looking at the ways Jesus welcomes all kinds of people to eat and be friends together. Make plans now to enjoy with all of us a big, easy Mardi Gras brunch after church on February 11th. If you can, bring a dish to share for this festive potluck. But most of all, plan to come and enjoy some festive time together. And now, as we turn to our prelude music, please use the music and the time of prayer to open yourself more fully to God's presence in your life. Let's stand and turn for Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit poured over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth light in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
As beloved children of God who share together in the gift of baptism, let us greet one another in the peace of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the third chapter of Jonah. 
the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city doing a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh re believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of life, word of God. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, and we will read it responsibly. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Place on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds.
The second reading is from the seventh chapter of First Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they have no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So I want to run some choices by you. Just imagine yourself in these situations and think about your personal priorities. Then tell me what choice you would make. So here we go. Choice number one. You discover that your elderly parent needs to go to the doctor on the same day you're supposed to take your teenage child for a scheduled college tour. Keep in mind, you can't do both and there's no right or wrong answer. What's your choice? Go to the doctor or make the college tour trip? Okay, choice number two. You plan to volunteer at the food pantry on Monday, but you've gotten a call that you are desperately needed at work, and your job is really important for the health of the people who depend on you. You really can't do both. So what's your choice? There's no right or wrong. Food pantry or work. Choice number three. A person in need is asking you for help. He's really hungry, but also needs gas to get to work so he doesn't lose his job. You've got $25. What's your choice? Again, no right or wrong answer. Do you give him a grocery card or do you help fill up his car with gas? What do you think? Now I'm asking these questions to make the point that our choices are not always easy. Sometimes our choices aren't as clear-cut as deciding between something that's good and something that's bad. Sometimes we have to choose between two things that are both good. We have to think carefully about our priorities and then put one good thing before another good thing. That's what happened in our gospel lesson today. Andrew and Simon, Simon who later becomes Peter, and James and John, 
are all doing a really good thing. They are contributing to the economy of their village by catching and selling fish. They are taking care of their families by providing income from their work. They are t uh, in the case of James and John, they are showing their father honor by helping out with the family business. They are being good sons, good citizens, good brothers, good friends. But then Jesus comes along and tells them that they should repent. That is, they should change their way of thinking. They should give up their despair that the world is always going to be broken. They should believe instead that the kingdom of God is at hand. And then Jesus says, come and follow me. Instead of catching literal fish for people to eat, come help me feed people in another way. Come help me bring people more fully into the kingdom of God. These four fishermen are now faced with a choice between two good things. It is good to be respectable, hardworking citizens providing for their families. And it is good to follow Jesus, to be part of this wild-eyed, hopeful thing called the kingdom of God. In the story, the four fishermen consider two good choices before them, and then they choose to prioritize the coming kingdom of God. They choose to follow Jesus. Now, do you ever wonder why? Do you ever wonder why they are willing to take an indefinite leave from their jobs for some unspecified type of work with no benefits or retirement plans, with a group of people still forming around a yet unproved and unknown rabbi? This short call story from Mark doesn't offer lots of details, but it does explain their willingness to put down their nets and their willingness to follow Jesus. Simply put, Jesus has told them the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is already breaking into the world and will continue to grow in strength in one place and in the next place, one person at a time, one day at a time. So what's this kingdom of God about anyway? What is so important and so compelling about the kingdom of God that these four fishermen are willing to change their priorities to upend their lives and to follow Jesus? Now, we should probably be able to describe the kingdom of God since we pray about it every week in the Lord's Prayer, right? You can do it with me. We pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do we really have an idea what a kingdom is like, much less what the kingdom of God is like? Keep in mind, Jesus in the Gospels did not well, in the first three Gospels, didn't come proclaiming himself. He pro came proclaiming the kingdom of God. This is hugely important. Being part of a kingdom should sound a little strange to our ears since we live in a country that calls itself a democracy, where there's supposed to be a balance of power between the branches of our government and where the government is supposed to be done by the people for the people. We do know about billionaires who fund political action groups and try to steer national policy behind the scenes by lobbying our judges and legislatures. Now, kings and emperors, czars and dictators, however, are a little bit out of our direct experience, except for those we know from other countries and from other periods of history. For the people of Jesus' day, however, there are kings with absolute power over their people, and there are emperors with even more power over their petty kings and governors. People like Andrew, Peter, James, and John know that the decisions of a king or an emperor can mean life or death for an individual, 
They know their policy decisions can bring whole nations of people hope or misery, food or starvation, freedom or slavery. We also know that the governments of our world today, whether they are called kingdoms, dictatorships, or democracies, have the similar power to bring good or ill to the people of the world. But back to our poor fishermen. They have seen plenty of abusive power throughout the past centuries, and now they know the power of Emperor Tiberius in Rome and the power of the local rulers he has put in place, Pontius Pilate in Judea and King Herod Antipas in Galilee. They know such human power is often corrupt, greedy, violent, and capricious. They know such human leaders often take wealth from the people below so that a few on the top can live in luxury while everyone else is left to struggle. The policies and behavior of such human kings and emperors do not inspire confidence, loyalty, or hope. Such human kings leave Andrew and Peter James and John longing for something for someone else. They long for a world where God's priorities rule instead. They long for God to reign over them, for God to set a tone of civility and respect, for God to set policies that will bring people hope and prosperity. They long for equity. For everyone to have access to food, education, and health care. They long for everyone to be accepted and welcomed. For everyone to feel worthwhile in the eyes of God. They long simply for the peace that comes when God is in charge. When God is in charge, we have the kingdom of God. So when Jesus shows up and tells them that the kingdom of God is at hand, their ears perk up, their hearts beat faster, and their eyes start to shine with hope. Their longing for God's kingdom is so strong that when they must choose between two very good things, between working as responsible family members and the good of laying down their nets following Jesus, they decide to make the kingdom of God a priority. They decide to leave behind what is known for what is still yet to come. We aren't necessarily faced with the rather stark choice that the fishermen faced in this brief idealistic call story. Jesus is not literally standing before us asking us to leave our families or our occupations behind. Yet, as people who are called to follow Jesus, as people who live with a sense of hope and urgency, as people who want to be part of God's work in the world, we do face significant daily challenges, daily choices. Sometimes the choices between two things that are both good. Do you remember those initial choices I offered you? Doctor's office or college trip? food pantry or going to work, grocery money or gas money. I could go on with more choices about how we might use our building or care for our children or bear a clearer witness to the world that we try not to be so-called Christians taken over and deputized by the national agenda of hate mongers and racists. When we cannot do everything, when we have to choose, then we can confidently rest in God's kingdom-making priorities. We can be guided by the question, what feels the most faithful? What will bring God's life and hope most fully to the world around us? Given our stages in life, our time, our energy, our resources, we ask how we can best feed the hungry, heal the sick, care for the elderly, nurture our children, and welcome the stranger. Put another way, 
we ask ourselves and we ask God, how can I today in my own particular time and place help make God's kingdom come and God's will be done here on earth as it is in heaven? Sometimes we may indeed need to remain at home to help our loved ones. That's kingdom work. And sometimes we may need to leave and strike out into the world. Sometimes we may need to lay down one responsibility in order to take up a new responsibility. Sometimes we may need to trust what is tried and true. And sometimes we may need to try something that is new and different. Whatever we decide, however we choose to follow Jesus, the priority that helps us make our decision is clear. Priority is bringing in the joy and hope of God's coming kingdom for us, for the people we know and love, for the people whose names we may never know, for the whole world. With all that in mind, let us stand now and sing together our hymn of the day, which is in the hymnal, number 580, How Clear is Our Vacation Lord. Let's stand and sing together. <laughs> With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed, which you will find in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth.
Please be seated for prayer. Please remember the following people in prayer this week. Donald, John, Jen, Pastor Brunjar, Adele, Al Alan family, Tom, Marv, Chris, Janan, Shirley, June, Pat and Connie, Lucille and Bush, Butch, Tasha, Carol, Christopher, Paul, Candace, Dylan, Mark, and Lynn. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea, Guide our care of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who cares for the suffering, cares for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under the threat of violence, those living in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. For peace among nations, especially between Israel and Palestine, Russia and Ukraine. For areas of the war world facing conflict and violence, especially Syria and Iraq. For fair elections and for compassion and integrity of world leaders. God of grace, receive our prayer. For damages caused by volcanic eruptions in Iceland, for safe evacuation and successful recovery efforts after avalanches in northwestern China, for relief efforts following Cyclone Bellel, for areas of the United States facing extreme cold and snow, and especially for those without reliable housing, heat, or transportation, God of grace, receive our prayer. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now that we have heard about God's boundless mercy in the story from Jonah, and now that we have heard Christ's call to follow in the story from Mark, let us offer to God our faithful service and our financial resources. Let us bring to God our gifts as we stand and sing hymn number 467 in the hymnal. And place them on your table board.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, who blesses and names you, Christ, who claims you, and the Holy Spirit, who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. are grateful every week for our ability to Zoom our worship service and post it later. For those of us who can't get here in cold and snow and ice, and those of us who are not feeling well, that's especially true today. Dave, how many of us are here on Zoom? Can you tell us? Eight. Eight? Okay. Can we all turn to the camera and just say hello to them? We're glad that you are here. Also, yesterday we had the memorial service for Robert Grow, and because of the generosity of people who cooked for that, we have fellowship hour today. Lots of delicious desserts. So please just make your way through into Fritz Hall and take time to talk and visit with one another. We are grateful that we still have Robert's paintings to see. Um, and a time to be with one another and remember him still. So, go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.